My name is Jay Chauhan. Um, I am a lawyer in Richmond Hill, and we have a mentorship group called Angel Mentorship Group, where we want to support the lawyers and articling students and other high university students who want to go into the law as a career. And for the lawyers, we do some training programs, and they also we like seek the consent, the approval of the law society to make them as a a continuing professional development program. So this is a short video to, to explain what we want to do in this particular program for the transfer of shares because one of the members asked in the group, how do you transfer shares in a company? So I've got Nima here and uh, he will frame the questions and I will answer these questions. But this is just a short video to explain what the full one or two year one or two hours of program will do to explain the transfer of shares in a company. Thank so, you. Uh, so, so, Jay, uh, sometimes the uh, uh, law office may be asked to uh, finish a transfer of shares procedure by the client, but how do we actually obtain instructions from the client to do that? The, we should always have written instructions. The reason is that there are so many details in a uh, transfer of shares of the shares of the company that uh, we cannot simply say to the client, tell me the instructions, I'll do the resolutions, and then you come in to sign. It is very important that we get the client to approve the instructions, namely, how many shares are being transferred, is there a tax implication, whether the shares are coming from treasury, or they're coming from the existing shareholder of the company. Mm -hmm. So these questions should be addressed in the form of a, a retainer by the client to the lawyer. Mm -hmm. Then he should sign that and then you write the different resolutions to, to transfer the shares. Mm -hmm. So the lawyer drafts the instructions just like a retainer and the client reads and signs. That is the safest thing to do. I see. Excellent. And uh, with regards to uh, deciding on the consideration for the sale of the shares, how do we, uh, how do we determine that? There are several different ways in which the shares can be uh, valued. One of them is the book value of the shares. Another one is the market value of the shares. In a small company, it's usually the accountant that will give the value of the shares. But these principles in the seminar, we will explain actually that in more detail, what are the methods by which you should evaluate the value of the shares and for which you trans make the transfer. The value of the shares may not be recorded in the corporate resolution, but it is extremely important for the purpose of uh, making a statement of the tax department on the cost based of the shares. And that's the reason for determining the value of the shares. Mm -hmm. I understand. And how important is a shareholder's agreement? Extremely important, Nima, because in the, the shareholder's agreement is, um, in fact, outside the arena of the Business Corporations Act. The, the act essentially deals with the question of how to manage and organize the company, the directors, the responsibilities, etc. But in terms of the shareholders and how they buy and sell the shares as between them, each other or outsiders have to be organized through a separate commercial contractual arrangement between the two parties, which is called the shareholders agreement. If a, if a shareholder dies or um, wants to withdraw from the company or if there's a conflict, then it should be done uh, by way of an agreement. If you cannot agree when there's a conflict, it's too late. So you should have a shareholder's agreement to address these issues before they happen. Mm -hmm. I see. And am I right to say that uh, when there is an event or a change that occurs in a uh, corporation that uh, resolutions are necessary, including for a transfer of share resolutions? Yes. For the shares to be transferred, it is under the Business Corporations Act it is the directors who are authorized to transfer the shares, and only the directors. And uh, they usually authorize the secretary of the company, and he then signs a certificate. And, and in a small company, you keep the share certificate along with the minute book. But in a bigger company, they simply register and you give the share certificate to the shareholder. I understand. So it's the director that authorizes the secretary for the shares to be transferred, and that needs to be reflected in a resolution? No, the resolution is that of the directors, technically. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the signing can be done on the share certificate to show that it's been authorized by the secretary can, can do it. I understand. Okay, excellent. 
And uh, how do you go by arranging a meeting uh, uh, and with whom to, to sign? The, well, here is a question of uh, sometimes a conflict of interest, actually. If you're in a small company and you're representing the vendor, there might be a question as to whether or not uh, there is a need for independent legal advice from the purchaser's point of view. Because the purchaser is looking to see that the title to the share is free and clear. There are no liens on it. And uh, there is an implied, as an in, uh, implied uh, representation by the existing shareholder that, that he's providing a good share certificate, what the value of the company is like, what the financial statements are like, etc. So it is very important that this disclosure be made and the lawyer makes an assessment that is there a conflict or is there not a conflict. And that accordingly, you might have one lawyer acting for the vendor and the company and another lawyer for the purchaser who signs the, the resolutions to purchase the shares. I understand. What is the role of the accountant in this transaction? The accountant should be involved. In, in my experience, there's always a problem trying to communicate with the accountant because the accountant uh, feels that he's doing his own uh, accounting stuff and the lawyer is doing his own stuff. But when it comes to transfer of shares, he's the person that ought to, to be told and he should give instructions along with the client on the tax implications uh, in, the, in the company. And I think the lawyer should uh, allow the accountant to make those decisions. And the instructions should come from the the client after he's talked to the accountant. So the accountant's input is extremely important in the case of share transfer. Excellent. And is there a potential for tax planning in the sale of shares? There is, but I think that it would be in this short video it would be difficult to talk about the tax planning arrangements. So we'll talk about it in the in the lecture itself. Okay, excellent. And uh, is it necessary to have a new shareholders agreement? Uh, for the remaining shareholders? So they're also going to talk in the new, in the, in the actual program. So I think there's a short video just to tell the members and other people interested to come and attend the lecture. We hope to do it in the next month or so. And I hope you attend. This is uh, for the exposure in the social media. And we want to gather the audience and I hope you can attend. We'll give you the details on the Facebook and the LinkedIn. And we look forward to seeing you in that uh, meeting. This is Jay Chohan and uh, hope you will come to the seminar.